G'day and welcome to episode 5. There's been a bit going on with work since I last said hello. I'm always grateful to work from home. The first time I realised I wanted to, long before it was common, was while living in this little cottage in the Blue Mountains of Australia. That's also where I started my blog and where I was living while gigging and teaching songwriting in a women's jail. Obviously, compared to how I look now, that was a long time ago. Long before raising a child on my own. Living in that cottage was also a few years before my journey with the trauma of disease and chronic pain upon my dear body began. Long before my finger joints fused, robbing me of my guitar playing, because I was so blinded by the wellness industry that I delayed trying science. Something that has since saved me. I'm now powered by both green smoothies and science. That time of realisation that I wanted to work from home, some years before it actually happened, was also long before I transitioned through menopause to truly step into my power, into the woman I have become, someone I'm proud to be. Back then, That younger Bronnie was smiling on stage while doing gigs in pubs and a few festivals, and often crying off stage. There was a lot of healing going on, but they were painful years in so many ways. The year after I was living in that cottage, I moved to another one, strangely quite similar in appearance except this one was on a 2,000 acre farm, a few hours north. This is where I wrote the book that would come to change everything for me. Of course, that was the top five regrets of the dying. Whenever I have a meeting from home these days, I still sometimes check in with myself in wonder and gratitude that this is my life now, being able to work from home. What a blessing. There's been a lot of progress lately with these dear people the team behind the movie being made from my book. We've been sharing the ride for over six years. This is us in Munich in 2016. Some real momentum is starting to unfold now around the film. I've also had a few interviews from home since the last vlog, though I choose not to do many anymore. I did do a TV one recently too though, remotely from a hotel room up the road. One of the highlights since my last vlog was a surprise visit from my fun and gorgeous mother. We went through some of our favourite routines, lunch at Byron Bay, dinner by the Tweed River, with the seagulls. We also took a lovely drive out past Wollumbin, also known as Mount Warning. It's a sacred Aboriginal site and the first place the sun hits the Australian mainland each morning. We visited a public reserve we've always enjoyed. 
So what did you say? I'm not allowed to speak about sex, weight, and what was the other one? Grey hair. And grey hair. We're both growing out our greys, so we're not allowed to talk about that. No, we're not. No. Or age. You're getting old. Or age. Yes. I love having you here, Mum. I really love having you here. I know, and it's lovely Thank being you. here. It's yes. a pleasure. You know, I, what I love... Well, I love a few things about you, but <laughs> I'm pleased. <A> couple. <laughs> <laughs> but what I really love is just how you're not defined by age. Like you, you're 84 now. It's only a number. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. But so really. while I'm still fit, I can do it, and I can drive 550 kilometres. Grandchildren are always asking. Our, my grandchildren are always asking for stories of the olden days. I think they think I was born in the year of the dinosaurs, but, <laughs> but not, not sure. Another critter just got my foot, but that's okay. okay. Yeah, so this is no, not not the year of the dinosaurs. At least um, maybe. You're going to say something that I'm not going to appreciate, so I'd say I wouldn't be saying it, Bronnie, or you won't. We won't be going to lunch. Right. Okay. I'd be nice to your mother. Isn't it beautiful here, Mum? Be nice to your mother, though, because she'll, if you're not, she'll come back and haunt you when she's gone. <laughs> <laughs> don't go. Yeah, okay. But if you go, don't haunt me. Okay, well, be uh, nice to me. Yeah, I'll try. I'll try. Yeah. What a beautiful thing to be doing on a Thursday morning when everybody else is working hard. And, and how gorgeous is this tree? How gorgeous is this park? Nice drive, nice and quiet. Nobody's here today. I love our drives and yeah. our storytelling. On the but last time we came here, there was, uh, you know, quite a few people yeah. using the river for kayaking. Yeah, there's nobody today. Sometimes they have school groups out here too. Oh right. Oh, that'd be nice. Yeah. yeah. It's lovely. Yeah. One time, um, they had a school group out here, and it was like I think it was like a spiritual retreat, and all the kids, the poor buggers, well. You know, it was good for them up to a point. So all of them were sent off on their own, obviously, to spend some time in contemplation. And there was this young bloke who was sitting down further near the water, sitting on his own. And then this couple further over, I'm not, a, I just remembered you said I'm not about to mention sex. <laughs> this couple were going for it out in the open <laughs> over there. <laughs> and this poor little bloke, like, you know, a hormonal teenage boy, is, has been told to sit there and contemplate and they're almost like right in his view and Eleanor was with me she was probably only about five and I just said, saw them I said oh no gosh you know and she said what are they doing mum I said they're, they're making love and she's like I said no let's keep walking darling we don't you don't have to watch but because she'd never seen anyone making love she's just I would have not at that age <laughs> <laughs> but she's just trying to understand it all you know to her it's just another thing to learn so she's like looking and this poor boy he's a bit further away he ended up turning his back and, and looking back up away from this couple so that he could spend his time in silent contemplation but um i bet he wasn't spending time in silent <laughs> contemplation <laughs> <laughs> no he wasn't the poor thing yeah no i just always every time i come out here i think about that and I did actually call out to the couple after a while, get a room, you guys, get a room. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, ah, just ignored me and kept going at it like rabbits. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it was beautiful weather and everything else, but it is a public resort. Oh, you're not so. wrong. <laughs> anyway, you did tell me the only thing I wasn't allowed to talk about was sex, so I'll, uh, I'll stop talking about sex now. The last five minutes you've talked about it, so we'll forget it now. <laughs> 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 Love you, Mama.
Some weeks are quiet, where I'm happiest in my own company. Some weeks are sociable. Some weeks I'm fairly able. Some weeks my body insists on deep rest and gentleness. It's the ebb and flow of life. And I find myself more at ease with that all the time. I've given up striving or trying to control outcomes. I'm allowing life to lead the dance instead, one step at a time. So from my office to you, I send love and thanks for sharing this time with me. Wherever you can, make good choices, especially those that are kind to your own tender heart. See you next time.